let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The concept of equality revisited. The third step to God. Everlasting God to deliver to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader of Lumba, Lumba, Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Second lesson, Luke 3, verse 11. Golden text, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 14. Quote, Brethren, what you have heard is what we want to reveal to you this morning. The summary of the lessons constitute the primary as well as the university brotherhood. It is the real brotherhood. The Gospels preach about the qualities of love, patience, truth, honesty, and humility hung on the lesson on equality. That is the commencement of brotherhood and marks the starting point for any person who decides to embrace brotherhood by sharing all you have with those less fortunate than yourself. It is also the complete of brotherhood, sharing equally whatever you possess is, so that none is more buoyant than the other, and none is in luck that there may be equality. Whatever is made by God is meant to be shared equally among the children of God. It is for lack of the wisdom of truth that man accumulates everything for himself. If in one's pot, so that the wealth accumulated get rotten, some wasting away, others destroyed by rodents and wild animals, while others die, but the children of men are dying of hunger. If you are able to practice all other Gospels but cannot practice this Gospel, you have scored zero. This Gospel is like beginning to count the arithmetical numerals starting from zero to naught. From starting from zero or naught. And naught or zero, as you know, is the beginning and the end of the numerals. You are true witnesses to the fact that the zero is the starting point is the starting point of arithmetical numerals before one or two is counted. This zero or not makes up most of the numbers. It makes up the ten, the twenty, the fifty, or hundred, thousand, one million are one billion. The naught is therefore the A and the Z. This gospel is the initial step, the ABC in understanding the work of God. If you have two quotes, you have to give one to the person who has none. As God has blessed you, so you have to share all your possess all your resources equally with those who are less fortunate than yourself. This is the commencement of the gospel of God. When you possess love, truth, patience, meekness, mercy, and self-control, equality is the foundation on which these virtues rest. And if you have equality in addition to other virtues, you are perfect. It appears to be the least of the gospel. Indeed, very infinitesimal. And when you listen to it, you may ask if that is all you are expected to do. Giving one of your two quotes to another person who has none. But I want to put it to you that it is the greatest, the final, and indeed, the most significant of all the gospels preached. Our own salvation and that of the whole world hang on this uh, hang on this efficacious gospel. Those to whom God had promised 
who inherit this kingdom are those who practice this gospel. If you fail to practice this gospel, it means that you will have no share in the kingdom of God. This gospel does not require vision, prayer, or preaching. This gospel should be written, circulated, and distributed to all parts of the world to enable every soul to read and understand the wisdom of the truth. It does not serve any useful purpose for you to seek after vision, prayer, or to receive lessons. But practice this gospel and all will be well with you. Whosoever receives and practices this gospel, his eyes will be opened and he will no longer steal or tell lies or commit murder or indulge in any act of sin. It does not only end with your sharing the two items of clothing and food mentioned, but includes also all the material possessions. Having been bestowed with the manifold blessings of God, you are now called upon to share all you have with those who are not as fortunate as yourself. A great many people become worried and would want to break their heads when they are told that in brotherhood every person is equal. Those who call themselves chiefs and kings find it difficult to accept that with their position they can be equal with schoolboys, the unemployed and the orphans. They feel they should not be equated with any other classes of people. What you are listening to now is the gospel of equality and I wish that you listen attentively in order to assimilate it. The third step, you are able, you are aware that we have the first step to God and the second step to God. The provisions of the two books lead you to this final gospel of equality. You do not require that someone should preach this gospel to you or that you should be offered prayer. It does not require testimony. You know its efficacy. There is no compulsion about it. But whosoever has two things should give one to him who has none. You should not wait until he requests of you. It is intended to be a voluntary and humanitarian service. Knowing that you are the child of the Father, whatever you have, share with the other children of the fatherless who are less, who are less fortunate than yourself. I want every inhabitant of the world over to know that this gospel is the everlasting principle laid down in this new kingdom of God with which every person has to comply himself once you are elected into brotherhood you should know that the practice of this gospel is your hobby your extracurricular your extracurricular activity when you begin to think about money you will appreciate that money in itself is nothing In the same way, land is not useful in itself. Food, per se, is not useful unless it is consumed by man. A motor vehicle is not useful in itself. Then, when no person enters to drive it, you erect a story building reaching to the sky. If you do not practice this gospel, by giving the apartments of the house to people to live in. The house by itself is not useful in any way. All the material possessions you will appreciate are not an end in itself, but only means to an end. And the end is the gospel of equality. Sharing all you have with those who are 
not as fortunate as yourself so that every person can use the resources to serve God. God created all other things first before he created man. He created water, dry land, trees, animals, food, and all other things and kept them properly preparatory to the creation of man so that man might use those things to maintain himself and that all might be at peace and that man should superintend over all his creation. Man cannot live properly without these possessions. Similarly, if man does not exist, the material possessions are void. God the Father is greater than us and we are greater than any of the possessions. All possessions are under us and we in turn are under the Father. The Father owns everything. God has created these things that we might be strengthened and enabled to serve Him and glorify Him for His handiwork. That is why the rich is, is cursed. Woe unto you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. The rich will not enter into the kingdom of God for as long as they continue to amass wealth, put their money in the bank, or build story houses, or build storehouses to keep their wealth. No useful purpose is served. Such an action does no good to any person. What is it to you if you erect a house and furnish it heavily, but no person lives in the house? The house becomes useless and you, the builder, are as well useless. In this kingdom, there is no place set aside or a city created specifically for the rich where they keep their money and wealth. This means that no rich man has a place in the kingdom. In the kingdom also there is no place set aside specifically for a person who has many children but would not want to serve God and his fellow man. There is no room for those who build houses in all the towns and cities and put up signs, house to rent, house to let, as a result of the number of houses they have built, they boast that since they have houses in all the towns, they should be allotted important places in the kingdom. There is no room for such house owners. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ says, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? He also says, Go to now, you rich man. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. How do those who are rich in the things of this world look at their wealth? Do they regard them as pieces of furniture or articles of adornment? They are not for any of these purposes, but are given to them for safekeeping, intended to be distributed to those who are less fortunate than themselves. Consequently, they will not only have self-satisfaction but also eternal life. Wealth is insurance to us and we are insurance to the Father. We have to employ these resources in the service of God and that there may be satisfactory service in the Father's vineyard. All the currency minted in the world should, you, should be used to serve God, distributed to those who are poor. All food crops planted and harvested should be used in feeding those who are hungry. You have heard that in the beginning God said, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruits yield seeds.
to be your meat. There is no place specifically allocated for money or wealth to be kept in this kingdom of God. There is no place where food is prepared and kept without being eaten, but people keep watch over it, fanning it and protecting it from being destroyed from day to day. When food is prepared, it is meant for people to eat. This is done every day. There is no empty or unoccupied house in this kingdom on the wall of which is inscribed house to let. All are occupied. It is a wrong connotation to say home to let. For whom is the home built? Who built it? It is my home and you own it. It is built for us. Do not put that notice up. And as soon as a house is erected, get in, eat there and sleep. You should go home and sleep over this gospel and then ask yourself, to whom all the things belong? The things are owned by man who has who has no second. It is said, heaven and earth belong to Jehovah and the fullness thereof. What belongs to him also belongs to his children. That is why the scripture has told us that a slave who is ignorant of his Lord's will shall be beaten with few stripes. And so, if you do not know that all the food and other material things belong to man, and that you should use them for the good of your fellow men, you will be infected with a few strokes of the cane. But any person who has known the provisor, the provision, as this gospel has now been imparted to the whole world from the high heaven, but fails to comply with the provision, then he will be inflicted with many stripes. I want this gospel to be properly written and circulated to all parts of the world and to man of all stations in life from Queen Elizabeth of England, the presidents of the European and American countries, because it is the voice of God descending upon the world. This gospel is the cause of confusion and rebellion, death and sickness, afflictions and tribulation, plaguing the whole world. An English adage has it that a hungry man is a hungry person? What will you tell a hungry person to induce him to listen to you? The wisdom of God is higher than that of man. So he started by creating the earth, heaven, water, dry land, food and other things that his children might not perish of hunger under, under pains of starvation. But you have not been instructed to accumulate all the things in reservation for yourself as your bona fide property. You neither eat them nor give them out to others, but you preserve them there while many are dying of starvation. Observe that their souls will haunt you. The rich always argue that it is not a true statement that it is woe unto the rich that they cannot see their way through why they who possess wealth should be cursed. I want to tell you that this statement is true as long as you are rich in the things of this world, but you close the borrows of your kindness by not distributing what you have to others who are not as fortunate as yourself. It is woe betides you. A great many people erroneous, erroneously argue that food is nothing. But I tell you that food is an important thing. 
of all the material things enumerated, food occupies the first position. When our Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto the disciples after his resurrection, what did he ask them? He asked, have you any meat? What was the first thing done by Abram and his wife when the angels went to their house? The first thing they did was to prepare food for the strangers. That is why the scripture has advised that we should not be forgetful in entertaining strangers. Entertaining visitors is the first and foremost thing that any person should do. It was by entertaining strangers that Abram had a share in the kingdom of God. Do you not remember that our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples about the guest chamber? What is the guest chamber? A guest house? Guest chambers are established anywhere for strangers to lodge. This is the preliminary thing that should be done in brotherhood. Very soon guest houses will be established and opened so that whoever comes lodges there, eats, washes and rests. What did Lot and his wife do when those two angels entered their house? The first thing was for them to prepare food for the strangers. What did Rahab di did? What did Rahab, the prostitute, did for the two spies from Israel who visited Jericho? The first thing she did was to entertain them and to make them feel at home. She gave them water to wash, food to eat, and a place to lie down. When the various signs and omens shown by God through Moses to convince Pharaoh to release the children of Israel from bondage failed, because Pharaoh's heart was hardened, what was the last omen on the last day? God instructed Moses to conduct a feast using the first male of each animal whether of sheep or of goat or of any other animals slaughtered, roasted and eaten by the congregation with great jubilation after which the Pharaoh will release the Israelites that was the function of food you do not regard as anything who says food is not important what by what means did Jacob usurp the birthright of his brother Esau? It was through red pottage of lentil, returning from his hunting expedition, where Esau had killed many large animals. He was nearly killed with hunger. He asked for food, but was told there was no food. As he was almost fainting, he said to his brother Jacob, Feed me, I pray you, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. But Jacob gave a condition, saying, Sell me this day your birthright. Esau told him, Behold, I am at the point of I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright be to me? Esau, therefore, with an oath, sold his birthright to Jacob with a pottage of lentils. Jacob did not usurp the birthright with any other device, and Esau did not consider it important to keep his birthright because when you are hungry, you are not yourself again. You will complain and curse every person and ask your God what sort of life you are living. When Isaac was about to die, he called Esau and told him, My son, I am old. I know not the day of my death. Take your weapons and quiver and your bow and go to the field and take me some venison and make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat 
and that my soul may bless you before I die. Why did he not tell him, come and let me bless you, but said, go and bring a venison and prepare savory meat? Why did the, but why did the mother of Jacob not urge him to go and receive blessings from his father? She did not say that because she knew what it was. That was why she took a fat goat and prepared a delicious food for him. When he had eaten, he blessed him. This explains why it is said that we should not be forgetful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unaware. When you argue that food is nothing, why is it that you have food enough and to spare in the house, but you refuse to give a part to some other person who have nothing to eat? You assert that you do not worship anything, but why do you have five naira and the other person has not got even a cobra, but you fail to give him even one naira. If your brother is hungry and is sick and has no clothes to cover his nakedness, you offer prayers over him and he recuperates, but he is very hungry and, uh, and naked and you pray that God should be with him. How is that? He is now naked and hungry. When he was sick, he did not feel the pangs of hunger and he did not realize that he was nude. But you pray that God should be with him. At the time, he is hungry and has need to wear clothes. Have you remembered what happened between that widow and prophet Elijah? It was the question of food. He was sent to hide himself by the brook chariot, by the brook chariot to drink from the brook and ravens were commanded to feed him every day. After a while, the brook dried up and he had to face the stark realities of life. But when he wanted to go up the hill, he met the widow who was assigned to sustain him. Consequent upon that kind gesture, the father's work continued to grow from strength to strength. There are so many examples that I may not want to cite here. Remember that rich king who said, the man of God was lazy and for that reason refused to help. But one of his wives always prepared food and took to David, whom the king referred to as an idle fellow. When he discovered that the wife used to sustain David, he was very angry. What happened at last? God took away all his wealth and handed them over and handed them over to someone who was prepared to use the wealth in the glorification of the kingdom of God. Do you believe that you are always afflicted for your failure to practice the word of God delivered to you today? Sometimes when angels visit your house, they go there with good news and wealth, but you dilly-dally and wish that God should be with them. They will return with the wealth. If in the past you consider that money was greater than a human being, you should now repent because you are overwhelmed with darkness. A human being is better than food our money, our motor vehicle, and all other material things in the world. Man is greater and in a better position than all mundane things. I do not want to overload you with these facts. Our first lesson will now be read. Listen attentively 
to the words of God.